Hello everyone and welcome to this special speed gaming presentation of the Link to the Past Randomizer Open League. This is not week 7, this is the tiebreaker race. I am MindDM, I'm going to be joined on the call this evening by Esper Hub. Hub, how are you doing this evening? Okay, there we go. Ah, there he is. All right, Hub, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing fantastic. My microphone just got the the case of the jitters, but uh, with the intensity of what this match is going on, it's no no short of an understanding. Yeah, there is a lot on the line this evening. Asclepio Scrod going for Finstashers, Falcon going for its mitts. A couple of big names in the Francophone community. Gonna put it all on the line this evening. One team will win and will move on into the bracket stage to play Blue Trinex Group, who were uh, just barely behind Biumvirate in their division. But uh, this is going to decide which of these teams gets to continue playing and whose league season is over. Yep, and today's format is open. That's seven seven. That means this is this is this the most basic standard you can get to as far as randomized goes, but it showcases how good the runners are, hands down. If you want to see how runners play on a regular basis, open seven seven is to go. And it's interesting because Open 7-7 was not seen in the first seven weeks of League. The closest we really got to this was Co-op All Dungeons, which was an open start. And here we go, we've got Immediate Divergence, we've got Falcon pulling the map out of Sanctuary, we've got Asclepius Rod pulling five bucks out of Link's house, and they are off. We get a map check, and I did see a pendant at the corner of my eye over there in uh, Eastern Palace. And a crystal at Hera, and I think it was also a crystal at Desert. Looks like guards are in the magic pool. That'll be helpful. Asclepius Rod knows it. Falcon tried to get it with the sign, now is going to hopefully get it with bushes here. I'm not sure if that guard dropped anything, and if he did, it may have been too far off the screen for Falcon to see it. But uh, we'll, we'll keep an eye on that one. Yeah, opening phase, you're scrambling for resources as quick as possible. And if it doesn't turn out, then uh, that's okay. We'll just uh, keep moving as we go along. Well, the tier one tree pole is also full magic. So Falcon not going to be missing out on magic at the very least. Asclepius Rod not pulling anything particularly interesting out of the early uncle route. And likely just following Falcon on into the village at this point. Who picks up 20 rupees at the thieves hat out. Saving and quitting. I believe this is a crisscross. Our runners are going to do the... <laughs> are going to crisscross just for a little bit at the beginning of the seed. This is actually pretty interesting because... Uh... Falcon, Not I think, fa wants to make sure that he's got some bombs here going into yeah. the village. Did all of those checks. Didn't have anything. Going to go ahead and south route into the village. Pick up, hopefully, at least a couple of bombs off of these 50-50 bushes here. Over two at the beginning. That's a little unfortunate, but that happens sometimes. Yeah, this is the go-to place for 50-50 bomb pickups, and there's one, and there's two. Usually that'll be enough. Um, usually I'll be very content with one, because if we go into Kakariko Village and bomb the unseenable bombable shack, we could uh, get some more bombs from that way. And that's that's how usually I get my resources at least if I'm this very tight very tight on it. We get a small piece of heart on the race game. We're not gonna really go for that. Yeah, as... the trick with getting to a second bomb is if there's something good on the race game, then you're spending one there and you still want one left over to go ahead and get into that bombable shack and replenish your resources. You can go with one. It's just a, it's a little, a little more peace of mind, I suppose, to have two. Yeah, that's true. Get a piece of heart at the back of the tavern. Uh, 
I can almost skipping the chicken hut for a moment. Don't forget that. I think he was trying to decide whether he wanted to go farm his bomb first or do this first. Oh, nice bow. I guess you might feel a little silly if you go and you farm up a bunch of bombs and then you blow open chicken shack and it's just three bombs. Yeah. But Esclopio's Rod did wind up with enough money to buy bombs instead, so going to give us the first look into the well. We do get a fire rod from the Kakariko well so far. A whole heart. 20 more rupees. And 20 more rupees. So he just made his money back off the bombs that he bought. Fire Rod, definitely the most interesting thing that came out of there, but 75 rupees gets you close enough to the bottle vendor money. That after you get done doing Blind's Hideout here, you ought to be over that 100 threshold and you can make sure you don't leave that check behind. Yep. I would argue Fire Rod very early is a blessing in disguise because that's going to be our fire source for this run, hopefully. But uh, we'll find out soon enough. We do get a mirror in one of Blind Man's hut chest, and we're going to be taking a look at the back part of here of the bomb wall, and we are going to get more bombs. Go figure. Bombs where you least expect it. Yeah, you leave the village full on bombs. You've got that fire rod as something of a primary weapon. It's it's not terrible. You've got the bow as well, and it looks like a slippery rod has actually hit a bunch of sticks here, so... Yeah, have, you have a few options now. You can go down to Mini Moldorm Cave and not worry about, well, I need to make sure that I land all these bombs and really conserve my resources. Uh, this is a little bit of a freer start at this point. True enough. Save and quit. It's time to go to South Shore from the looks of it. Asclepius Rod does still need to clean up these couple of checks down to the south of the village. Falcon is going to have a quick splash into the water here, see the rupees on the island. Interesting that we're going to go ahead and buy bombs here when we've got five. So now both runners are starting their um, journey to the South Shore to do their other set of checks. Our, uh, so quick question. Would you be the kind of person to go check out Agena's closet or not in this situation? Uh, personally, I would say yes. I, I definitely play with a lot of people who say no to that. Uh, my reasoning is, I'll make my skips later, it's just too easy for the game to put something in that Spear 1 location, and uh, then you just leave it behind for 45-50 minutes, and trouble ensues. Uh, speaking of trouble, the flute not going to be any trouble, that'll get the runners up onto the mountain, plus that mirror you can dive into Harrow. We still don't have a weapon that's going to hurt Moldorm, but we're closing in on the possibility of clearing that crystal dungeon. That is true, and with the mirror... That is going... Well, not the mirror, the flute. The saving quit is uh, mostly uh, well, well thought out because you're going to be using the flute anyway very soon to not only get back to South Shore, but also to get out of South Shore once you finish. It saves you a couple of screen transitions here. It saves you a whole lot of walking time getting to any of the other South Shore locations. It's... Uh... You can't even say that it's a nice piece of tech. It's more of a nice piece of routing, really. Yes. Have to imagine that both of the runners activating the flute are just going to be heading right on down to the south shore where they were. Maybe, maybe Falcon starts seven at this point. Maybe he goes ahead and picks off Ice Rod Cave. Difficult to say, but... It's now easy to get all of the checks down there that he had otherwise left behind.
Anus Tomorrow is going to be, well, depending on how our seed is going to play out, may be very useful, especially if we're dealing with Ice Palace. There are some cases in which it's hard required if you need to beat Mire and or Turtle Rock. There are a lot of cases like Ice Palace, Skull Woods, Palace of Darkness, where it's nice to have. It's not something that you absolutely have to have to beat those dungeons, but it certainly is a convenience. This is interesting. Mr. Rod is going over to Eastern Palace. Going to probably check Saha's closet first before doing anything else. Which makes a lot more sense. Like, item density-wise, three checks compared to the one-offs. Yeah, this will make some sense. Yeah, you're still looking for something in the nature of a weapon that will hurt Moldorm. This is three quick checks. If you don't get to what you're looking for, you do have that bow and the fire rod, and with Eastern being the green pendant, maybe you're going to make that your next play? The possibility exists, anyway. Unfortunately, all of Saha's got is a whole lot of money. Could prompt our runners to start going towards Zora Domain, but, uh... I wouldn't put it... I wouldn't hold my breath on that one. Looks like Asclepius wants to go ahead and see Front of Escape at this point. It's not bad, you've got several checks available here. You've got that Fire Rod, so Dark Cross is in logic even. Yep, and Falcon checking Ice Cave. Unfortunately, that was 20 rupees, so... That's a check off the, off the back of his mind, and they're going to be probably either following suit or going he heading towards uh, Escape as well. Yeah, it often feels in a mode like Open 7-7 that you can really get yourself in trouble sometimes dipping pendant dungeons, particularly something like Eastern, which is honestly a bit of a slog of a dungeon to get through. It's longer than you really think it is, but by the same token, it's three items plus the green pendant. As long as there's not something locked away by the lamp in the vanilla big key location, then you're talking about a potentially full clearable dungeon. So, yeah, in this situation, most runners would hold off on going to Eastern until they go into Pod first. That's the way I see it. And uh, that could be either beneficial or it could completely backfire, but that's just how it is. Rando is going to Rando, no matter which way you slice it. And Falcon's ready for the Eastern Palace play right now. Is Clippius Rod going to pick up the Zelda Cell chest here in just a second? Looks like the most interesting thing that came out of that front of escape play was the blue cane. And depending on a spike cave has something very important, we may not even need that, unfortunately. It could still be useful useful as a last ditch protection item though. So don't discount it for it being a discount cape. It's a solid safety. It's a bit of an underrated uh, way to defeat blind. Now you hope to have uh, and in this case you could use Samaria until unless you got into trouble and then swap from red to blue cane to finish the fight off, say. Yeah, that is true. Looks like Falcon is not yet finding the big key, so he's got one more chance to get that in logic, and we've got a vanilla small key and dark cross for Asclepius Rod. So that must mean something really good it has to be in the back of the sewers. That's lantern lock, no. Well, no, it's not lantern lock, no. Since we got fire rod, we should be able to get to these logically, so... This is a matter of, uh, getting to it. Uh, the key rat seems to have escaped, but having lit that brazier, Asclepius Rod is going to have no trouble tracking down the other rats. 
and the big chest of the Eastern Palace is 300 rupees. We're getting a lot of money and not a lot of progression here. Something tells me we're going to have to shop for our progression today. It is starting to feel that way. Uh, Asclepius, ooh, ooh, there's... There is a decent chunk of an answer. That hookshot gives Asclepius Rod a lot of access to Death Mountain. That's Paradox Cave as well as Pyro Cave. And depending on what items we get there, that will definitely tell us how the sea will be dictating this race. Meanwhile, it's interesting to me that Falcon is going for the one true lamp locked chest here. This could absolutely be an item, but it feels like you've been given the fire rod, you got the big key relatively early. Yeah, well, there's there's the third item. I believe it went bombs, three hundo, and that piece of heart. And he is going to continue to the green pendant. Yeah, you already need deep in here, so full committing to this is not a bad idea. Especially if you're thinking green pendant may have something for you. We've got Rod back out of the dark here, being followed by this wily old man. Ooh, and he's got the hammer. That is a lamp-locked hammer, interestingly enough. So, here's what my prediction is. I feel like Lantern is in Paradox Cave, if, this, if that's the case. Yeah, lamp, the lamp is just up here on the mountain somewhere. It almost has to be, right? The seed wouldn't be this devious enough to give us Titan's Mitts and Paradox Cave as well as the Moon Pearl and tell us to go in the Dark World to get our Lantern. That would be ridiculous. Ah, well, there is a glove in Specky Rock Cave. We've just got a piece of heart on top. And Falcon going to arrow down these Armos Knights. Yep, there's the compass as expected. There's the green pendant. Green pendant turn in pending. Now, it would be kind of funny if that was the lamp. Yeah, it, it would be logical eyes. That would be the lamp. Oh, man. Or it could be our second glove. That would be very dirty if the seed decided to do that. That would be an interesting spot if the Moon Pearl shows up relatively soon. That could be... Oh, and it is. That is a glove on the green pendant. That is potentially really dangerous for Asclepius Rod, who is just a Moon Pearl away from Hammer Glove Dark World access right now. Oh my goodness. Falcon going with the thorough play, following that bow fire rod combo to the green pendant, pulls a glove off of green pendant, and tough to say when Asclepio sees that. We had a pendant at Pod, we had a pendant at Mire. So, I believe I did not catch the five sixes. Yeah, no, so, Pod. I. Pod was a red crystal. I can count. I can count to red crystal. So. You know how you, when you do a race and you how you plan your routes and you know there's going to be certain things you'll not do, but you'll die on that hill for not doing it? This is one of those instances. Like, I didn't think... I was like, okay, it would be really cruel for another glow to be on green pin and turn it, and lo and behold, this is one of those... That is uh, a rando... A, a huge rando moment, and I'm starting to... That is a dangerous spot for sure. Now, we will say that since Pod is crystal, according to our tracker, and I have to believe the tracker, who's uh, better at catching map checks than I am, Yeah. Asclepius Rod has the bow, has the hammer, has the mirror, so eventually you're going to crystal Pod, right? And yeah. when you do crystal Pod, depending on how much you have left, you say, well, Eastern Palace is right here. That's kind of your chance to do it, isn't it? Yes. We did pull a Moon Pearl, but I believe that was a uh, entire para. That was a uh, that was one of the first few chests. So, it depends on what 
keeps pushing the runner away from doing green pinned Eastern. Besides doing the turn in, so. I feel like they're going to do a lot of other checks, though, before they do. Before they make the dive to do a full clear. not Well, not full clear Eastern, but at the very least, just to get the green pendant. And that yeah. could happen at the tail end of the race, but uh, I'm gonna, not gonna. I'm gonna hope not hold my breath on that one. At that point, it's difficult not to full clear eastern. Maybe you skip the vanilla big key location, but you're looking yeah. for the big key early, and yeah, you get to make one skip there pretty much. It is safe to say, though, I'm pretty sure Falcon will be the first one to enter in Dark World. Well, it's possible Sclopius Rod can just flute away to three or four and enter the Dark World at either of those locations. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot they do have Hammer and Glove. Quick check on uh, Death Mountain Island. Simultaneous walks through Spiral Cave. Only for one green rupee. At least we get a little tip from uh, from our shenanigans as as far as routing goes. So Falcon is going to find the other glove up here in a moment. Asclepius Rod needs to finish clearing out Paradox Cave. Then I'm really expecting to see some divergence because Falcon very likely going to continue this play into Hera. But then you've got the mitts, you've got the hook shot, you've got the moon pearl at that point. I would have to think you're just going to go ahead and enter over at either the TR portal or if you want you could jump down and start at Super Bunny but either way I'm expecting to see the Dark Death Mountain checks from Falcon oh, meanwhile yeah. Asclepios gets a choice of start at 3 start at 4 well with the fire rod in hand going to going to Skull Woods wouldn't be a bad idea Yeah, looks like he wants to start at four, go ahead, hit Hype Cave, quick five items of density, and move along from there. Ah, uh, there it is, and Pod was a Pendant Swamp and TR-5-6 Crystals. All right. So that's about that that's time. So now going in pot seems like an even uh, even less appealing play. Yeah, but, uh, I'm, I'm not sure what draws Rod over there at all at this point. Something's got to be in pot to make going into it much more attractive. And then you still got to have like the huge foresight to just go mirror out and then go into Eastern to get the green pennant and turn that in. Now, here's the thing that we haven't really thought about to this point. He knows that that hammer is out of logic behind a lamp. So he knows that he is not logically in the dark world right now. Right. And there are only so many locations that he has left. And I think those locations basically just are Eastern Palace. So if Rod is following the logic right now, he knows that something is there. Now, he could think that it's just the lamp locked behind the fire rod or just a lamp in an early chest but he still knows that there is some progression waiting for him there that's true 
I mean, put it that way, yeah, he may end up going into Eastern much sooner than we expected. Which will put him back on track, for sure. Only seven digs so far for the digging game, so not that bad, not too shabby. Yeah, you don't have to spend a lot of time on it, which is nice. Falcon evening up the crystal count here with that kill of Muldorm at the top of Tower of Hera. Puts him ahead by one crystal at this point. Oh wait, never mind, I'm thinking Eastern is a crystal, my bad. Puts only puts him ahead because he has Titan Smiths. Let's put it that way. Yeah, given that you had to clear Eastern to get the mitts, you may as well go ahead and count that dungeon. Meanwhile, Rod <laughs> taking a bottle that he found somewhere along the path and getting the flippers. So that's logical, well, mostly logical access to Swamp Palace. This is fine, right? It's fine. No, no big deal. We, we're not. We're, the seed is not playing nice, so we don't really have to, at this point. Not yet, at least, until we start running out of uh, areas to cover. Though this also means uh, Rod may end up thinking that Lantern is on, only the only thing in Eastern, and by that definition, that's probably going to be a problem, but I don't think that's the case. This... Bombos gets us into Turtle Rock, and we've gone full heart, full heart, full heart, and a mushroom. <laughs> What's <laughs> going on, Hookshot Cave? That's kind of weird. Hmm... <laughs> I mean, Bombos could be in the mushroom turn in, or magic. We can use that mushroom to see if Magic Bat has it. That would be uh, fun to do. I'm just waiting for that mushroom to be another full heart container. Oh my goodness. We do get a beaten bottle in Super Bunny Hop K, so we can use that bottle for uh, turning it turning into the sick kid for sure. I'm guessing uh, Falcon must have heard me. No, nope, never mind. No, nope, but no, I think he's just entering the dark world here. Maybe he carries this play up to catfish and turns the mushroom in on the way. Yeah, that would be a good idea. As far as like routing goes, that cleans it up a little bit nicely. Though, would you do it before doing magic back, or would you just go ahead and straight up do it and just? not really care about what Magic Bat has to offer. At this point, I feel like I would just go ahead and turn it in. We're deep enough into the seed that any given fetch quest is probably not going to be the answer. Okay. That's really just a personal preference thing, though. You can go either way with it. We've got Rod working on Thieves Town here, has found the small key already. Could be a bit of an interesting blind fight, still having no sword, but you've got the hammer, you've got the red cane, you've got the blue cane. It, it seems like he ought to be alright. Yeah, they got plenty in the arsenal to handle blind however they see fit. I don't think they'll have any complications fighting blind without the uh, sword, for sure. Who knows, we may end up finding our sword along the way, is one way of putting it. It's entirely possible. Ah, uh, that looked like Heart Stun Prize from Rod. 
I'm not sure if that Stalco had shaken off the stun yet or not. So, if nothing is in Thieves' Helm Dungeon, that will definitely push Rod into doing Palace of Darkness into Eastern Palace, without a doubt. Because you, you don't really got much to go on, and if you're... Do you really want to do Swamp Palace with the... Well, no, you can still do Eastern with this loadout. Not Eastern, but uh, Swamp Palace with this loadout, for sure. It'll be very long to do it, because switching the hammer is a little bit of a pain to fight Argus. Eh, but you it's can always do quick swap fire rod shots for phase one. Uh, speaking of the question of whether or not we're going to fake powder with that mushroom, it looks like Falcon has our answer using that fire rod to burn down the entirety of his magic bar. Oh. Oh. Well, that's practically vanilla behavior. What's going on here, Hub? Starting to think the seed has some shenanigans, even more shenanigans for us, especially after that uh, glove location for Green Pendant. We may end up getting bombs from that, but with that sword, we can go into the Dark World and handle Skull Woods, and we'll link that in with uh, Thieves Town. And at this point, it feels like Falcon's advantage from those mitts is just continuing to compound, because that particular sword is mitts locked, and right now it's the only one we've seen. Rod going to start off this blind fight with the Red Cane. Personally, I think I would have started it off with the Hammer, but uh, either way works. Got the second part of the fight pretty well. Has enough health that he can just go ahead and get through this with Red Cane and spare himself some time on the refill. Apparently half magic was in the back of Thieves Town as well. Another really nice convenience item on the board. One rupee for handling all those pegs without boots. Okay, see, thanks, I hate it. And where do I go to get my time back? <laughs> Looks like Falcon's getting ready to flute this purple chest over, and is Clipio's Rod about to enter at the portal at four? I do wonder if this is going to be a play up towards those Pendant Bow Dungeons. This looks like Swamp. Looks like Swamp to me. Well, you know what they say, there's always a sword in Swamp, right? Right, yeah, let's hope so. That's another one of those rando classics. Purple chest only giving us some bombs, but uh, that's just one check out the way, and it was done pretty cleanly. So we're gonna go right back into the dark world and do our thieves town in Skullwoods. Falcon is gonna be on their way to pretty after that wild shot in the dark for a green pendant. The rest of the rob has been going pretty well for him. Yeah, having those mitts is making this clean up really nicely for Falcon at the moment. We know that Bombos is still outstanding to get into Turtle Rock, but 
uh, other than that, we need, what, an ice rod and another sword? Yep, and we'll be in the, uh, we'll be in the bare minimum to be in go mode at this point. Three from go at half an hour feels pretty decent if you're Falcon. Yep. Just in time to see Specky Club. Yep, get a little Specky statue action here in the front of Swamp. It saves you about 20 seconds. It's it's tough to say no to as long as you've got the hook shot. Yep. See if Southern Loop Chest turns into anything here. Yeah, that's just the map. So you know that there's at least one item on left side swamp. If you're a Sclepius Rod, you're just going to go for it. I hate left side swamp. All my homies hate left side swamp. That's because it's slow and there are only two items in it at best. To see some diver down action for left side swamp. And I'm wondering what's here that's most helpful to Rob at this point. Probably the Bombos medallion, I would think. Or an actually yeah, or another sword. Or another sword would be pretty good. We can use a sword right now. I mean, I know most. I know our runners are very comfortable dealing with not using a sword, but we still need, at the very least, massive sword to do damage to Ganon. Unless it's swordless, specifically swordless mode, then we can use a hammer. Yeah, then modifications are made. But when you're not playing a swordless seed, those modifications are not made, and the hammer won't do anything to the pig, which is uh, unfortunate. But here we are. Left side swamp, unfortunately, not paying out for Rob in this case. It's unfortunate. Okay, so now that we have checked most of swamp, where would we have to go to next? At least to put us back into the scope of doing what we virtually what would have. Well, we know there's something important in Eastern. But in a runner's mind, that doesn't look good right now to do. Because you want to do your crystals, you want to get to GT and be done with it. Well, at the moment, unless Rod finds something like the book or a sword, he doesn't have another crystal dungeon, at which point those bow dungeons probably start looking a little more appealing. Yep. Twenty rupees and the wrong visible item. <laughs> Just a shield there. Diver down room. And I have to say, I'm starting to wonder just how deeply this lamp is going to be buried because if we know that the hammer's behind it and this swamp has been vacant of all progression right now. I to think... Hmm. So if you follow logic-wise, you have to do Eastern in order to get your glove to go to Death Mountain to get your other glove, your Moon Pearl and Hammer. What would be the area that didn't rely on any of those items right now. That will give us our lantern. 
Well, we could get the second glove via the uh, via the flute. Yeah, via the flute. So, so all of all the things that are being done in the dark world right now are possible. We could still have lamp and pod because we've got flippers that were in dark village, so we could just swim across. That it could be over in the mire area. You flute six. There are a lot of options for this lamp. Terrifyingly Jeez. enough. Jeez. Yeah, Falcon's going to work on Skull Woods here. Uh, it's another crystal dungeon, thanks to that sword that he pulled off of the smith. He's able to clear this. We do get cape as Argus goes down, and that is another crystal rod. Despite not having gloves, definitely is keeping up with the pace. And I feel like the... Now, see, the moment they come across the next set of gloves they're probably going to be kicking themselves but they're most likely funny enough is still on pacing with uh falcon at this point it's a matter of uh rod having to go back to do uh skull woods at this point that'll be the only setback here yeah at the moment rod is up this crystal he's got three to two now, Falcon's going to even that back up here, barring Moth really playing unkindly with him in fairly short order. But it does look like Asclepius Rod is headed in the right direction here. We're doing checks that are at least within the vicinity of the Eastern Pod area. Mothila goes down to Falcon, and we get a map out of it. But that's another crystal in the pocket. That looked like a bit of a blind check of Hylia Island by Asclepius Rod there for a whole five rupees. Heading into the Zora area. Alright, this is the other possibility along with Eastern Palace for him. Well, at least if he gets his lancer that way, he'll they'll be able to piece it together to probably go to. Oh, we got a we get two swords. <laughs> okay, game sure. What's Just... better than one sword? Two of them. <laughs> that's that's not the fairy that's supposed to be vending swords, but okay, it is randomized. <laughs> can confirm. Yeah, that's a good sigh of relief now that he doesn't have to worry about not looking for any other weaponry. It leaves him in good shape to go ahead and get that Skull Woods crystal when he's ready to. Zero wouldn't have Lantern. That would be silly. That would be really silly. Okay, no, he has ice have the ice rod. Oh boy. Well, at least we don't have to hunt for it today. Oh, and now all of the swords are, acquired, are uh, oh. accounted for. That was a sword in the front of Skull Woods. That's crazy. So each of our runners has two swords, and they're from different locations. So who's going to get butter first? It feels like probably Falcon, just because it's easier to walk into Waterfall and open those two chests than it is to go to Smith. Because Asclepius Rod just cannot do Smith right now. He lacks the glove to make it possible. So he'll get his right. third sword here. I'm assuming that he's going to Skull Woods with this play. So he'll get that sword relatively quickly, but 
Smith is late if ever. Ooh, and well, I was totally wrong about the contents of that mushroom now, wasn't I? It was at least red. I was close on the color. <laughs> Falcon getting a new pair of Jordans, and that just opens up even more of the of the game for him. Yeah, we're going to Ice Palace. We're gonna start making a beeline to clearing even more dungeons now at this point. You've got a red cane, you've got a hook shot, you've got a hammer, you've got a couple of swords, half magic to go with your fire rod. Yeah, this dungeon is not going to get substantially better for you, and it's a crystal that you'd like to put on the board. Now it's not a bad time. Now, a Sclopius Rod will probably kick himself just a little bit, pulling the sword after fighting the moth here. Oh, they got hammer. Half magic and fire rod. They got this. Yeah, it's easy enough. It's just, you, you like that comfort level of the tempered sword. It deals with the moth more quickly, and the shorter that fight is, the less chances it has to get out of control. That is true. When is ever a moment where you do you fight Mothula and everything seems to be under control? Uh, the first second and a half when you're charging up for your double dash poke. After that, it's just it's John Madden. Just get out the trail illustrator and scribble on everything because that's what it looks like. Yep. So for Falcon, we're still looking for Bombos, as well as Ice Rod, and, uh... I'm gonna assume a book. Well, no, wait, we don't even need a book. I'm sorry, because we got Flute and Titans events. So... The moment he finds those, he's gonna be in pretty good shape to go and go, Mo, and... Bombos was the entry needed for Total Rock, correct? Yes, it is. Okay. Doesn't look like Ice Palace is showing off anything particularly interesting for Falcon at the moment. Starting to wonder what the Bombos location looks like. My my guess is that we're looking somewhere in the Meyer area. Hi, Kay. I'm calling it. Calypius Rod picking up that third sword. And Falcon's got this fire rod out, one puff down. Seems to be seems to be a little lacking in the magic department now though. Gonna burn the blue and just do the rest. No shame in burning a blue for this one. Especially not when you're still on Master Sword. Master Sword takes a little while. Hammer's hitbox is a bit wonky. Yeah, just just load the fire rod back up and get the job done. It's fast. Get a free load after reload afterwards. So, and you can always flute back to potion shop.
The Scolipio squad checking bumper, having found the cape, sees that it is not anything worth his time. Pretty sure this is going to be our loop around into going in pod, so... It has to be, at this point. There's really nothing much to go off of, especially when you don't have Titan Smiths. Oh, and interesting, Falcon is not going to take advantage of that location to check any of the Zora area checks. So that's two swords and the ice rod that are currently just kind of out in the wild to him. Unless they're doing these... Well, you don't get much of an improvement. Well, Tempest Sword is a definite welcome improvement, but doing Desert Palace... With Master Sword, is not that huge of a difference, especially if you have Fire Rod. Like, you can probably just use Fire Rod to be done with it. Yeah, it's another one of those where Fire Rod, particularly Fire Rod with half magic, makes Land Moles a reasonably easy boss to defeat. We do get a small key on the torch. Red Bull Ring not being very cooperative today. And this rod is uh, doing a hop, skip, and a jump to go over to Catfish. This makes sense, especially if you already did Zora. You don't want to orphan Catfish, especially if you're tight on looking for pro further progression. So a vanilla small key, vanilla big key in Desert Palace. We're not going to have a vanilla glove, though. We can say that for sure. <laughs> that would be funny if another pair of gloves come in. Uh, and here's Rod starting at the portal at 5, going to take the Dark World access with him, but it's going to put him at long last in range of the thing that he needs. So yeah, Lantern may be in here. And that would prompt the going to uh, Eastern Palace afterwards. And just getting a green pennant. You have to think that without mitts at the moment and without any kind of access to Desert Palace, the Asclepius Rod has to be pretty low on locations here. So I'm assuming if they're as a runner, if nothing in the East is in these two dungeons, um, I would start calling shenanigans on the C generator at this That's point. That's when I would start worrying that I skipped something. Yeah. Either that or just bite the bullet and start full clear independent dungeons for sure until we come across them progression and then we can you know just say our swear words for a little bit and then move on with the rest of the sea all right falcon is now done with desert palace that is a fifth crystal on the board for him five to four falcon over rod at the moment there's our bombos okay so i was way off of my prediction on where bombos was at Oh, okay, two necessary items needed are in pendant dungeons. The shoe is on the other foot now, at this point. That's going to be a fairly difficult location for Falcon to get to. I, I feel like his go mode is now split between two places that he doesn't really want to go. He's been close to the Zora area and not gone there. And having already full cleared Eastern and gotten major value out of it, it doesn't seem like Palace of Darkness is really going to be on his radar right now. 
So here's the thing at the swamp. You really doesn't have much to go to. You will have to start making a play call from here to find his uh, ice rod and bombos. I feel like you go to the Palace of Darkness for the item density, if that's the case. And then afterwards, you start doing your one-off checks until you get to Catfish or Zor and Zora into Zora. That's the only way I think I can see how this rate, how this, uh, the rest of the. How this end game would unfold for Falcon for sure. But yeah. House of Darkness having bombos right off the bat just suddenly makes uh Rod not too far off from Falcon as far as uh mileage goes now. And all it takes is having to go into a pendant dungeon that the other person probably wouldn't be doing. And at this point, we probably should note that at some point here, Asclepius Rod is going to have to go up Death Mountain and get that mushroom to turn in for the boots, because Desert was, in fact, hard boots locked, the small key on the torch leading to the big key in its vanilla location. I'm pretty sure once they get Titan Smiths, they'll start going to Death Mountain to start doing those checks first, for sure. I wouldn't be entirely surprised if he gets the mitts and cleans up his other... that tries to clean up his other crystal dungeons down here, though, because Ice Palace... Oh, yeah, that's him. true. Yeah, Ice Palace you can definitely do. Like, you don't have anything that needs to be wrapped into or out of it, so... It is in his own happy little place. But ironically enough... well, not unironically un un enough. Yeah, it's in his own little happy little place that you can just go in and out with no issue. So yeah, I can see that being the case. Ah, uh, looks like it's going to be the map on Pendant Helmosaur. So Asclepius Rod out of pod has that Bombos medallion in the pocket now. That's it's helpful, but he doesn't have access to either of the medallion dungeons because they're both mitts locked and he's still missing those. So into Eastern Palace he goes. Yep. The sea had to force him to, at, towards this way at this point. And they're definitely, they're going, and then the moment they pick that up, they're going to eventually get the, either get the lead or catch up to Falcon for sure. Is it's this an a matter interesting of position? It's almost Mitz Go mode, but it's not quite. Thank you, Desert Palace. It's one of those things where you kind of hope to have Mitz or Hammer Go mode just because of how much it locks out, but in this case, you're you're not quite there, unfortunately. Going for the old style diver down. Nicely done. Oh, Rod's thinking about it. Do I really want to go for this out of logic check right now? It's going to feel both good and bad about this, I think. Not going to be leaving the item behind, but it's not an item that's going to help him. Well, I felt, well, there wasn't really anything in uh, Big Key Room, right? No, there wasn't. No, it was a piece of heart. Yeah, he's going to, yeah, either way, he's going to full clear it. Like, I think you go in here in an intention to full clear it because, one, none of your other progression items are nowhere to be seen here. You're out of options. Might as well break the logic one more time to just get this item out the way. Just so you can put the... Don't mirror, please don't mirror. Please, 
I know it's tempting, but don't mirror. <laughs> Hovering on that mirror kind of gave me some, uh, got me sweating there. You're thinking about leaving. You've got all of the items, but it's the green pendant. And how many locations do you still have left? You glance over at that map tracker or you do that mental inventory and you say, I don't have enough left. I've got to do this check now. And that is Swamp Palace on the board for Falcon. The crystal count is now 6-4 Falcon in favor of its mitts here. And it looks like Falcon is going to land on this in the order that's going to help him the most. But no, he's heading either for this Whirlpool or for uh, Ice Rod Cave. Nope. Yeah, it's Whirlpool Here. time. He's going to continue yeah. skipping by the Zora area. Oh, boy. Or he could be doing catfish into yeah, Zora. Yeah, he could, he could catfish into the Zora area. That'll yeah, work, too. This is, yeah, this works out. Because I was going to say, he the only the only way I see this being feasible is you're going to do catfish into Zora. Which make, which cleans up the route a, little, a lot more than just going to um, Palace of Darkness right now. You're on the assumption that the other pendant dungeon does not have anything important. Maybe the overworld does. So you prioritize on that, especially after you bank on your one play call of going to green pendant. So yeah, this, this, this is, is fair. Going to, this is going to clean up really nicely for him, though, because he's going to get his ice rod before he gets his Mambo's medallion. Yep. And that will definitely throw him into go mode to be able to finish up the rest of the seed. As he gets his um, butter sword, for sure. He could have threw a bottle in there to see what the fairy was going to give him, but uh, no time for that. So, to be really honest, you got like 1,528 rupees. You're not really looking to see what the bottle fairy, what the waterfall fairy will give you for your bottle, so no point in that. And right. like Rod has the mitts going to the Meyer area. He's probably looking to well do the overworld checks here, but once he start once he starts going in the desert and seeing that's locked, he's gonna be forced to go elsewhere. This may be a better thing for for it to happen to him now than later, because uh. He can save and quit and start going into the uh, Death Mountain to start doing the other stuff now at this point, which will give him his mushroom for the turn in. For the boots, at least. Yep. Rod getting the bad news that he's going to have to find the boots here. Uh, going to go ahead and make the one other check that he can, hoping that the boots are just this another key under the doormat situation, and it is not to be. Well, I, what I will say that is very impressive is that uh, Rod is uh, only like one or two crystals behind Falcon. Without mitts, Titan's mitts, no less. So, if you can say anything about this race, is that uh, Rod definitely played it pretty well, given the loadout and the uh, routing that they have done, for sure. If this went any other way, I'm pretty sure it would have been in Rod's favor at this point right now. That early play into Eastern Palace really paying off for Falcon. It's been paying dividends essentially all game. And there is the lamp in Checkerboard Cave. Go figure. So yeah, we had the fire rod locked glove. Then we had the flute locked glove up on the mountain. And you were supposed to do all the rest of that nonsense to come over here and get your lamp so that you could clear... Uh... Well, I, I well, guess Turtle Rock. Turtle Rock is our lamp locked dungeon, really. Yeah... 
Yeah, because Palace of Darkness didn't really have anything besides Bombos, and that was in uh, Staffel's room. Yeah, the back of Pod, where you expect the density to be, was not really anything for our for Sclepios today, and it seems unlikely that Falcon is going to see that. Given the location of the Bombos medallion, I'm expecting he's just going to pick that up and then leave, rather than dipping into the back early on. Yeah, the moment he saw that, he, the moment he sees it, he's just gonna be leaving because uh, he will be our runner to be in go mode for sure to uh, take care of the rest of the scene. Was able to crack open a few areas before uh, Rod gets to it, and was able to take care of most of the fights because of the equipment loadout that he got from the Titan Smith itself. Falcon's gonna pull up his lantern and wonder, like, wow, geez, that's a funny thing you do. <laughs> Doesn't even pick it up. I don't blame him. Oh, he goes back for it. Never and mind. he goes back for it. All right. Like, wait a minute, Turtle Rock. Uh, it has had to be one reason to get it, I guess. I guess the thought process there is, what if I pull Ether and I have to go do Dark Mire to pull Bombos off of Ped or off of Vitreous? Oh, jeez, that's a... Those are some terrible thoughts, but thankfully we know where Bombos is. And uh, it depends on how long Falcon staves off going into House of Darkness before he gets to that. Oh, this may be Palace of Dark. No, wait. Okay, yeah. I think I was it is. I don't think he really has anything left except maybe Spike Cave. Yeah, Turtle Rock is a red crystal, right? Yes, Turtle Rock is a rather red crystal, so he's oh, not okay. going there. Okay. Not yeah. doing Pyramid Fairy right now. Yeah, can't do Pyramid Fairy without the other red crystal, and even then, Donald, it's only two checks. Might as well do Pod anyway. Falcon's just continuing to try and clean up everything except Palace of Darkness here. Just just doesn't want to go. Eastern Eastern had something he wanted, and so he doesn't really want to be back in the area ever. And <laughs> he's going to last locate it, and he's going to feel terrible when he finds it, because you never think about the things that really could have gone wrong for your opponent. You just think about your own mistakes. Yeah, that is true. Huh. Oh, he never did escape. Okay. He never Casual did hour and six minutes for one location check. <laughs> <laughs> we 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 do those. Uh, we do those. To be really honest, it's a it is a medallion, so it could still be like it. Medallions don't have to be uh, logically locked. They could just be locked anywhere they want to be. So uh, it's understandable to be like, oh well, I just gotta look up and down everywhere for this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do all of this before I do a pendant dungeon, and this is the hill I'll die on for sure. Which is uh, good news for Rod because Rod is uh, looking to do cleanup on the rest of their crystal dungeons for sure, and. If all goes well and according to plan, Rod will be able to get their boots very soon and dark after this dungeon, and will probably be one crystal dungeon behind um, Falcon, from the looks of it. Yeah, it's time that Rod needs to catch up, and it it looks like Falcon is just intent on giving him as much as he can. It's really becoming a question here of. Can Falcon full clear the game faster than Asclepius Rod can get up to the mountain and find the uh, find the mushroom? Now he does have to go turn that in as well, so it's possible that he full clears Turtle Rock here. 
In fact, I might even say it's likely that Asclepius Rod full clears Turtle Rock here. You full cleared Turtle Rock before Desert Palace, though. Actually, yes, you would, because that's the only dungeon that you know that is locked behind one item that could be anywhere, so... Yeah, I can see that being the case. Boots doesn't have to be required for... doesn't need an item to be required for anywhere. It could just be wherever it wants to be, so... And here's Falcon finally giving it up, going to Flute to 5 and get into the Dark World. Here we go. I don't think he has anything else left. This is last location time. Yeah, this is last location. <laughs> except, for, except hunting for an ice rod, we're hunting for uh, Bombos. Meanwhile, Rod is going to be going up the mountain. He's going to most likely he's gonna with the intent on clearing turtle rock here he's like i got one medallion i'm pretty sure it's gonna be for the entry for turtle rock if my if my uh foresight is uh sharp on the nose which he's it's going to be but and that may not you're thinking well there are six other checks up here if i don't get that maybe i get the boots and the medallion that i need is just in desert there's there's a lot to be said for just coming up here Yep. Mildly surprised he's opting to enter at Super Bunny here. That's where the mushroom was at, so... Was it? Super Bunny was, um... Mushroom, had mushroom in it? Yeah, it had I think to. it was the last chest of Hookshot Cave. Because oh, it was yeah, full the heart, last full chest. Heart, full heart and a red <laughs> mushroom that turned into red boots. Yeah... All right, Falcon has pulled Bombos out of Palace of Darkness and is the first of these two runners in go mode. Yep, the only thing left to do is do for him to do is Turtle Rock, and then after that is just a GT climb. Which, by the way, uh, kind of wondering where that big key for GT is at, but we can't figure, we can't ponder on that just yet. We gotta wait for uh, Falcon to finish up the Turtle Rock dungeon. To, for that to happen. We still have five locations in Turtle Rock where the Turtle Rock big key can be. Oh, <laughs> we geez. don't need another game yet. Well, both of our runners are going to be in the Tudor Rock location, so it's just a matter of uh, how close they'll do it, but uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to be Falcon's race to lose as far as like how this race is going to pan out. If they die a lot on the GT climb or even die around here, that will give uh, Rod even more time if Rod decides to... Uh, well, not decides if Rod manages to uh, pull ahead as far as the climb, the climb up here goes. Uh, there was Falcon thinking, I'm down to two hearts. I'm just going to take a quick death warp. And the fairy says, no, 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 you should live. The fairy scolds you for thinking death warping will be quicker than mirror. I, the set, I feel the same sentiments, the same fairy. No need to death warp. But Turtle Rock really can be one of those unforgiving dungeons. You can understand why Falcon thought he was in a situation where a few extra hearts here would not be a bad thing. 
but... Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Just kind of forgetting about the contents of one of those bottles. It happens to the best of us. Again, Turtle Rock being one of those unforgiving dungeons, that was not an intentional death warp. Falcon and the Chain Chomps were having a little party in the middle of the room, and it's not wise to party with Chain Chomps. To be really fair, that, was, that that is a very tight place to have a party. I'm not sure if... uh. First, we get a shovel for our troubles. One more thing that you can check. The mental goblins on that one. The mental goblins chanting dig spot as the shovel is in their hands. And uh, Falcon um, decided to get a mulligan, or another mulligan, as some would call it. Going to steal the key, because we got the big key already. And we're in go mode, so we don't really have to check out the lava chest key. Yeah, Rob, meanwhile, still needing the boots, is going to make this check. Unfortunately, the pokey was kind of getting away from him. I want to say Pokies are like the third worst enemies in this game. No, fourth. After them is the Spitters, then after them is Dead Rocks, and then of course Chain Chomps. Ah, uh, but what about the Parabombers? May maybe if there maybe if it was enemy enemy miser, perhaps maybe those, but uh. I haven't had much bad run-ins with those guys. Uh, last week was Endomizer week. I had plenty of bad run-ins with those guys. Oh, that's exactly <laughs> why I said specifically Emmy Misers. Yep. So Rod is going to be checking Nimic Cave, hoping to come across Boots. But uh, we know that Boots is tied behind Mushroom, which is tied behind... Wait, what was Mushroom tied behind? Clearing Hookshot Cave. Yeah, Hookshot Cave. Okay, okay. Gotta get it together. <laughs> yeah, Falcon here just looking for one small key. Finds a heart container instead. There should be a key here, right? Yeah, there's absolutely a key here. It just happens to be in its vanilla location. Again. Again. Go figure. Man, I'm surprised that with all these checks, our renders haven't came across silvers yet. I guess it's in the GT climb, as expected. Yeah, they're probably just in Ganon's Tower somewhere. At this point, they almost have to be, although the the comedy option is, did you find the arrows in Misery Mire? <laughs> <laughs> or there, too. Oh, Falcon going for the Zero Cycle with Butter Sword. It's reasonably easy as long as you get your dash stopped in time and nails it right down. Nicely done. Yeah, it's definitely worth noting that these two runners are very seasoned veterans of speed running randomizers, so do not be surprised that the, all the tricks that they're pulling is, while it looks to be hard, they make it look very easy. And there's our silver, so who would have thunk it? Yeah, completely unavoidable. All right. Ganon, you're not even trying at this point, are you? Ganon just, Ganon's like, you know, I just, I, 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 
Okay, so here's the plot twist. We get silvers, but Big Key is on Tower. I'm calling it right here. 20, 23 or was it 22 for Tower? Yep, Falcon into that GT cutscene here, going to rummage around those 22 checks in Ganon's basement looking for that big key. It's the last thing he needs in the entire game, aside from slaying the pig. Solid walking laser skip by Asclepius Rod there. Yeah, it's really hard to time it right just to get it get out of it cleanly. Oh, there's our big key. It was in Dark Magician Room. Yeah, just head left, go to the Stalco's room. Check number three was the answer. Mr. Rod finishing up the uh, Renix fight. Had a little bump in the wall on the way, but that's okay. Yeah, the health situation got a little dicey there near the end, but clean enough to not taking any hits in phase two is more than enough left over hit points. And we're at the start of the Gauntlet climb with Mr. Falcon. Butter sword, silver arrows, and the fire rod going to make pretty quick work of this. Let's see, it looks like he's going to go for an arrow on the Stalco. It, uh, it sneaks around to his right, but he cleans it back up with the butter sword. Yeah, blinking, you missed that Lanmo 2 fight. Wiz robes, easy enough. You just get out the King of Samaria, do a little flashy dance with the red cane, and all of a sudden, all the Wiz robes just vanish. That's the Archon performance. There we go. Just in case you missed it the first time. But, um, I know there's a little something a little bit weird on Mr. Rod's side. I'm surprised they did. No, they did check. Sort of rock did no they no 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 i meant to say i know they checked the uh hook shot k that's what i meant to say did they definitely because now he's dashing towards desert okay i think that was just one of those hungry hungry tracker moments that's fine we have we have basically uh, pointing out the last bits of tidbits here and there, so. Interesting. Falcon not opting for the magic refill there. You've got half a bar worth of half magic. It's not really required here, especially with silvers. It's, it's usually just one of those comfort things that pretty much all runners will pick that up at all times. I think he feels behind, so he's trying to cut as much fat off on the last end of this race before uh, 
regretting anything, as some would call, well, some would put it. Yeah, in his mind, he essentially hard last located that Bombos medallion, and as I was saying earlier, you just never know what things occurred, what little routing foible tripped your opponent up potentially. Does get a nice bubble double. These patterns are not the kindest and most generous things. There's another double to finish it up, though. Here we are, Falcon on Hong Kong Airlines, going to be deplaning at the Pyramid. It is time for one final face-off with a pig. Oh boy. Getting a little spicy there, down to four hit points, but now he's into phase three. Phase three, phase four with silvers. This ought to clean up reasonably easy for him. Yeah, the only thing that will set him back is an unfortunate death. After that, he, uh, he will probably take a walk of shame, either, either getting a safety or at the very least taking his time to do this fight again for sure. Yeah, there is that bonkable tree down at the base of the pyramid that has a fairy in it. That's not too shabby. Meanwhile, Asclepius Rod does have that 7th crystal in hand, is heading for GT, but it's going to be too little too late. Get your GGs in chat for Falcon, representing its mitts, going to take this tiebreaker game home. Its mitts going to move on into the wild card round to face Blue Trinex Group. It really was Mitz that just sealed the deal here, hasn't it? <laughs> like, both literally and figuratively here. It's right there in the team name, right? It's right there in the team name. <laughs> but yeah. And we are, if I'm not mistaken, we are joined by Falcon himself. GG's out there. Congratulations on your win. Thank you very much. Good evening. Uh, so, what, yeah. so yeah, what was your initial thoughts on that know. scene? Uh, yeah, that was, uh, how do I say, a sword list at the beginning? I, I can, I'm gonna say that. Uh, boots were too late for me. <laughs> but, uh, because, because the Heist Rod was not, uh, I think the Heist Rod was not well played, right? It was on uh, the water checks, is that correct? Yeah, it was in Zora. Yeah, so because that ice rod was not well placed and uh, Bumbles was in a crappy location, <laughs> I would say that, uh, I, I didn't feel too, too bad. Because I, I thought it, will, it could be very easy to uh, uh, get that uh, Bumbles and just forget about Zora and go in TR. That, that's what I would have done. Uh, go, go in with the uh, look for ice rod and TR, you know, so. I think it was not too bad. Where were the boots again? I don't remember. Boots was uh, located behind Mushroom, which is on that uh, oh, yeah, Pocha K. Yeah. yeah, so so I said they were late because uh, yeah, that, that Mushroom I had with forever. I even uh, fake bother with it. Uh, but uh, I think... See, the funny thing was, is that near the start of this race, you decided to take the dive to go in the Eastern Palace first, and that paid off in spades for you because you finding the pair of gloves there, and then you just worked your way up towards the mountain and get the second pair. While uh, Rod was yeah. kind of being very adamant and avoiding 
independent dungeons. And I was like, this is one of those moments at the start of the race where you go, you prioritize over this, and this is the heal that you will die on sort of situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's something that uh, probably helped. The thing that uh, told me, uh, I, I kind of hesitate because uh, I had all three items. But yeah. it wasn't logic, I had the Hurley Fire Rod, uh, the, I didn't need them to finish that dungeon in logic, so I, I was... When I found the gloves on the Sasha, I said, okay, that, that's good, that's good, I'm doing well. <laughs> so, so, yeah. The... Yeah, I think, like, the way you found those gloves made... Because I know you was a little bit hesitant going pod after a while. You was doing a lot of the overworld checks, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, the main reason was that uh, I, I didn't want to take too big of a risk to, you know, leave the bombos at, at uncold, for example, you know. Right. So yeah. I, I was not uncomfort- uncomfortable because, you know, that I saw and everything, but uh, I felt that if I was going in pot for nothing and it wasn't go, uh, I already does that seat. You know? Okay. So I balance options and I try to imagine okay maybe a rod will just go and put last like I do. Okay. That's how I thought about it. You know. That was a uh, that was nice. Uh, I cannot stay very long because there's a double restream and one in French. I want to go say hello to to them. Oh, sure yeah, we, thing. We yeah, should but... let you get to that. Well, one more thing before yeah. you go. This mm-hmm. was your play and race. You get to face Blue Trinex Group. Are you familiar with them? And um, uh, even if you aren't, uh, how are you looking I... forward to week one of the bracket? Well, I'm not familiar with the players themselves. Uh, I, I think I know one. Uh, but uh, I, uh, I look at the results. Uh, <laughs> maybe a little bit nervous. It's a very strong team. And, uh, well, uh, we'll uh, we'll try our best, of course, Uh, but it will be a good challenge, very good challenge. Until then, thank you very much. Good luck in your next race. Thank you, and thank you very much for doing this series being last minute. Uh, That's a good shit. Yep, thanks for putting on a great show. Good game. And please, by all means, get over to the French Restream. I'm sure they've got questions (laughs) for you, too. Yeah, absolutely. Meanwhile, Mr. Rod is going to take care of Lanmos, taking now two of the Lanmos with the Silver Arrows. Going to finish up the other one with just some Sword Slashes. It's kind of nice when you get that nice long hop right in the direction that you're standing and you can just go for a slash and get him in one round. Yeah, you don't get that that often, especially on Lanmos too. They definitely move a bit faster if I remember correctly, is that right? I don't know that they really move faster. It's just you also have to worry about the timing on that fireball shooter. Oh yeah, that's better. And this is this is why they rank three on the worst enemy list. And that one's not that bad when Landmo is there in its vanilla location, but. Again, last week was in a miser, and there were some people who had a lot of trouble with Trinexes and Helmosaurs and things of that nature in that room. I can only imagine. I can only imagine, and sadly, it's not a good, not a, not a beautiful set of imagination there. through with the Moldworm 2 fight just has a couple of rooms to get through before Aga 2. That's another one of those rooms coming off of Inamizer Week that I sit there and I think, wait, why isn't he keeping up? There are so many things that can go wrong. 
Oh, right. It's it's just the vanilla room. It's fine. It it does basically the same thing every time, as long as you do basically the same thing every time. It's fine. Don't worry about it. And, uh, one of the many blessings of automating your play a little bit. I still need to learn how to do that room without thinking, which is uh, not that too hard, but it's just... Having to commit to memory on that one could be a little difficult. They do finish up their trigonometry, so uh, Aga 2 is down. And yeah, as I had suspected a while back, and I guess I'll just mention it now while we're seeing Phase 1 of Ganon, Asclepius Rod never did get to that fourth sword. His fourth sword is on Smith's. That's okay, though. Who needs the golden sword when you got bacon? Use bacon on bacon. That's, that's the vanilla way. I'm gonna go ahead and pop a blue here. Looking to probably switch to either bow and arrow, or at the very least, uh, their torch to do torch glitch. But uh, you got half magic, you got silver, so you don't really need to. At this point, you might as well just uh, wink, not wink it, but uh, bulldog it, as some would call it. Yeah, you can afford to go all out at this point. You're very unlikely with half magic to run yourself all the way out of magic. And you can get a triple here. Plates, you can set up for a triple here and yeah. nail it right down. Nicely handled. Asclepius Rod going to put the game in the books. You love to see it. The triple, that is. Like, like I'm pretty sure if this went any other way, Rod would have probably came out on top on this one. But the location on that, uh, on those other pair of gloves set them back quite a bit especially as far as routing goes that is after all the nature of rando so right, yeah, Rando. Rod, get your ggs in chat for him does finish second in this one unfortunately that is going to be the end of the finstasher season but valiantly played rod gg to you yeah, only doing it in un one hour and 35 minutes, too. That's pretty impressive time when you think about it. On a 7-7 with pendant required dungeons. Like, I have, I am not going to lie. I probably would have done this in like 145 or so. 150. If 150, if I'm uh, feeling very tired. Yeah, there were a lot of dangers in this one. There were a lot of traps that could see you lose quite a bit of time. And even though Asclepius Rod fell into one of the larger of them and put off that pin to Eastern Palace, turning in a 135 is not just respectable. I'd call that a really good time for the way the seed played out for him. Yeah, and then you got to think about it, too. They did Swamp Palace without no sword, and that takes some time and some skill to do, especially when, you, when you're trying to get Argus. Yep, and I can confirm from the race room, unfortunately, Asclepius Rod does have other plans this evening post-race and is not going to be able to join us in the booth for the interview. So let me say one more time, good game to you, sir. Well played. Yes, good game. We hope to see you in the next um, Randomizer League season. If you're putting, putting us a show like this one, and even though it is a loss, it's a very impressive time and display of performance. I definitely would love to see them race again at some point. Yeah, Rod's been around for more seasons of League than he hasn't. I've, uh, I've clicked over onto his League page here. Seasons 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6. Apparently, uh, apparently skipped out on Season 5, but it seems more likely than not that we'll see some more of Asclepius Rod here in Link to the Past Rando League in the future. So, now that the race has concluded for the tiebreaker, 
what is going to be the uh, the league's plan now? Because I know we're going to take a break and before we go into playoffs. So it's just a matter of how the brackets will go for those playoffs. What we're we looking at here. Well, we have the brief break this week because, well, there's SGL. <laughs> and we're, we're not starting league playoffs during SGL. We're just going to let that go into next week. And then we'll start. It'll be a full two-week slate to get three games in. It is best of threes this year. And it's all co-op. So here, if you're not overly familiar with it, is the way it's going to go down. The higher seed in the matchup is going to pick a mode for game one out of the following list. Co-op Old Dungeons, Co-op Inimizer, Co-op Retrance, and Pilot Spoiler. These modes are fantastic, by the way. Uh, they are. They're good modes. They will test a variety of skills, and it's teamwork all the way down. Personally, I am a huge fan of this. A big fan of, one might say. Uh, and then, then that pick is going to flip. The, uh, the lower seed is then going to pick, and they'll get to try and pick the mode that they are the superior players in to try and force a game three, or to go ahead and seal the series if they won game one. Uh, yep. Once we get through that uh, that first round with the wildcard teams, we are going to reseed. The conferences will be reseeded based on our... We'll have our top four seeds coming in, but the bottom four, depending on who wins out in those series, we will we'll do a little reseeding to make sure that one faces the lowest possible remaining seed. It, it can be a bit of a handful to get your brain around, and mostly I'm just going to wait until Drossy puts it all into the website, and then I'll find out who my opponent is. <laughs> but, it, but it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll work. I, I'm assured that this has worked in the past and will continue working this year. Yeah, that should take care of everything. Do give a follow to our runners in their respective Twitch channels. They have, at least for... At, at the very least, for granting us the blessing to commentate and watch this race unfold for the tiebreaker here is very amazing. Like I said before, 7-7 seven, seven, seven open. It may seem basic, but at its core, showcases the runners. 